everything that happened at the beginning of 2014 has been preparing probably for decades. It was understandable in the early 2000s. Something was going on. It was obvious that Ukraine was losing something in this region, since it had been given to people which considered it using only pragmatic approach. These processes were imposed, they happened in Donbas, or if we consider the territory more widely, on the southern east, since they had been prepared. Russia corresponding special services sent their double agents earlier, which were conducting their mission there. I think they had prepared people in advance. Cooperations has intensified after the Orange Revolution. From the beginning of revolution, Russian special agencies have started to work diligently in Luhansk region. I remember Cossack choruses have been revived, various delegations from Russia were often received, and our delegations were sent to Russia. Different kinds of conferences and competitions were organized. After formal part there was necessarily an informal part in the restaurant. Everybody was sitting at the table and had rest at the evening. Then the inviting party brought people in civilian clothes, and questions started. How do you live there? Are the salaries sufficient? Where do you live? How much does petrol cost? Have you a car? Let's make friends, we'll help you. May we come to us? You may come to us, informally. We invite you, no money is needed. Such relations have been started. At that time it was noticeable that more and more attention was paid to the conception that further would be called Russian world. In cultural institutions, libraries, exposition named Russian world appeared. Neutral meetings were organized where people came to talk about the relations with Russia and no efforts have been made to develop sovereign united Ukraine. When the Maidan, the revolution of dignity, had started, small Maidan was created near Shevchenko monument in Donetsk, where you could see people you met before. They were few in number, but they came there every day during all that period. I didn't trade the Maidan very well, I didn't support it, since my soul was hurt when Yushchenko had dumped us. All those who had supported him in Luhansk and Donetsk regions during the Orange Revolution. He left us at the mercy of Ephraimov and Akhmetov. After the Orange Revolution, we said that the Orange Revolution had won in Ukraine, but it had lost in Luhansk and Donetsk regions. It was also remarkable that local authorities' representatives treaded all processes in Kiev during the Revolution of Dignity, and the most tough of the regional council, the city councils and the state regional administration formed squads of Titushki and sent them to Kiev. They created the myth that there was anti-Maidan, and the representatives voluntarily went there. They paid them money and indeed gathered them almost officially. It was alarming, but we hoped that all would be fine. However, I am confident we were able to find ways to compromise during all period of our independence. Problems had started from the Maidan, from February 18 to 20, when protesters were shot dead. I am absolutely certain that it wasn't Ukrainian plan to solve that problem in such a cruel way. It was definitely a Russian plan. I remember that late February, when the day of remembrance for fallen people on Maidan was, and intellectuals, Ukrainian patriots, small number of people came to Shevchenko monument in Donetsk. However, we were surrounded by numerous squad of Titushki, armed with bats, which heard the local authorities call that right sector, Banderevci, had come and came to beat them, and the head of regional administration was standing on the stairs of the regional administration located nearby and talking to these Titushki that right sector could come. I realized that we stand on the threshold of new events. From late February to March 2014, in several regions of southern and eastern Ukraine, massive actions against Ukrainian authority has started. These actions were held under anti-Ukrainian, pro-Russian, federalist and separatist slogans. Unfortunately, these rallies were anti-Ukrainian and separatist. I wouldn't call it rallies, but riots. They were started not only in Donbass. Along with the beginning of the aggression of the Russian Federation in Crimea, they started implementing the scenario of so-called Russian Spring. According to the scenario, we had to lose all eastern and southern territories. These separatist riots with capturing of administrative buildings, waving Russian tricolors, calls to form Kharkiv, Odessa and other republics have started. This fire was set to the south and the east of our country. 
On March the 1st, people with flags of future so-called Donetsk Republic gathered on Lenin Square. We didn't know them, they were strangers. We had an impression that they weren't local. They were aggressive. We noticed cars with Russian plate numbers, buses from Rostov region, which had entered Ukraine as transfer buses, but came to Donetsk and brought people there. They have already been tied, they knew what to do, they had already got some instructions, and they didn't bring any ideas, but an impulse to move that would lead to so-called DPR and LPR republics. Then weapons have appeared along with Caucasian people, which we didn't know. There was the call to organize a flash mob. It was spontaneously near Transfiguration Cathedral. However, even organizers didn't expect to see so much people. Most of them didn't participate in the Maidan. They have already awoken. They all have already understood that the situation was gone to the next level. People gathered since they felt own responsibility. They had to do something. On March 5th, many people came to Lenin Square. At least 10,000. That is true. However, those who were against us gathered from the opposite side. However, it was alarming that representatives of security services and local authority sympathized the opposite side. They were standing instead of defending us. Local authority has betrayed. Regional authority has betrayed. The security services have betrayed. And this betrayal was a stimulus for further escalating of these events. We lost those settlements where the local authority had betrayed Ukraine. We managed to defend, or in some cases, return control of those settlements where the local authority remained faithful to Ukraine. One of the illustrative examples is Svatova city in Luhansk region. Dremov came there. He was born there. He came with all his Cossacks homies, but local hunters gathered with hunting weapons, rifles and told him, no, we don't need Luhansk People's Republic, we don't need any Cossacks liberties, get out of here. And they have gone, without army, without special units, just local residents, in Luhansk region. If the local authority, including local security forces, hadn't betrayed so massively, nothing would have happened. A great number of traitors, as well as in Crimea. Security forces, the security service of Ukraine, SBU, Burkut, police, have gone over to occupant side. It happened in some regions, particularly in Donbass. Indeed, security forces didn't resist. Police officers were watching how separatists were capturing buildings and even helped them in some cases. By the way, when we talk about Donbass, many high-ranking state employees of the Ministry of Internal Affairs have gone over to Russian occupants' side. How was the building of Luhansk SBU abandoned? It was a betrayal, pure and simple. It was voluntarily transferred to occupants with all weapons stored there. Moreover, there was an order to hand over all service weapons, and an order not to fight back. While the building of SBU was blocked and held, they freely entered the regional administration. Police received an order to hand over it, and they did hand over. From the end of March to the beginning of April, pro-Russian protesters started to capture administrative buildings in Donetsk and Luhansk region. Construction of barricades and checkpoints on the main roads was started. Protesters started getting weapons. Those people who captured building were only puppets, which special services of the Russian Federation used. They have been playing for time speaking about self-government and other benefits. Actually, this time was needed for Russia to accumulate greater number of its security forces, professional militaries, which have transformed this conflict from political to military. At first, I didn't feel any fear, as many other citizens. I couldn't believe that all these events would result in such blood and extent. Indeed, I believe in the army, the special forces. I thought all these things will be stopped in a week. Using those scarce resources that we had, we started to take control over the situation in many regions. I just want to say that in fact in most regions we have suppressed this pro-Russian revolt or separatist riots. First actions showed us that we're losing control under the situation. We have already lost a lot on the first step. And not just because armories and administrative buildings were captured there. When in Konstantinivka or Slavyansk, 10 people captured the buildings. Nobody did anything.
Indeed, on the same day, as far as I remember, on April 7th, Kharkiv, Donetsk and Luhansk regional administrations and buildings of the security service of Ukraine in Luhansk region were captured. It was a critical situation and I think it was the greatest crisis and the beginning of aggression at the same time. It wasn't the beginning of some revolts, but the aggression on the east began with capturing these three state institutions. On April 7, 2014, in response to declaring Donetsk and Kharkiv People's Republic and capturing of the administrative buildings in Kharkiv City, Donetsk and Luhansk regions, the acting president Alexander Turchinov told that the anti-crisis staff would be established. Separatist formations coordinated by the Russian special agencies captured the buildings of Kharkiv Regional State Administration, Regional State Administration and Security Service of Ukraine in Donetsk and Security Service of Ukraine in Luhansk. Moreover, what is the most dangerous, they have taken over weapons. Anti-terroristic actions were carried out against those who took weapons. Despite the order, this assault wasn't launched by Donetsk and Luhansk Security Service of Ukraine. They told that there were too much civil people and the assault would result in loss of local people. They told the solution could be found through the negotiation. However, unfortunately, momentum has been lost. Russian militias and Russian special agents shielded themselves behind a defenseless civilian population for implementing their plans. It worked. On April 30, 2014, the acting president of Ukraine, Alexander Turchinov, made a formal statement that Ukrainian authority didn't have control over part of Donetsk and Luhansk regions. The most dangerous situation was on the east of Ukraine, in Donetsk and Luhansk regions. In Luhansk city, the building of the security service of Ukraine, the prosecutor's office, the regional state administration were captured. In the Donetsk region, the situation was more complicated. In Slavyansk city, formation completely controlled by the Russian Federation were located. Moreover, administrative building in many cities of the Donetsk region and the Donetsk city have been captured. The Donetsk regional state administration was under their control. Today, Ukrainian authority doesn't have control over the situation in the city, as well as on the part of the Donetsk region. On the eve of April 12, Slavyansk city was captured by militants led by Hirkin. We received information that the military operation had started and we didn't speak about excited activists. They didn't use them, even local terrorists haven't already used for capturing this territory. Only militaries worked, special agents worked. Undoubtedly, there is no choice. We have to keep the problem localized to this territory. We have to destroy special agents. The other question is that we didn't know real number of militants. The convoy of special group Alpha and officers of the Ministry of Internal Affairs went to Slavyansk. As a result, civilian people detained them, blocked its movement and the convoy has stopped. While they were trying to peacefully unblock the convoy, militants came around the flank and opened fire with high-caliber weapons. There wasn't any resistance at all. Panic, and we can't speak about this now. Chaotic retreat. After the security service had reported about the failure of operation to destroy terrorists in Slavyansk, I understood that the security service or the Ministry of Internal Affairs couldn't accomplish this task. The armed forces were needed to join, since the war had started. And it's not a joke. However, probably the most critical moment of understanding the reality of the threat was when I saw the former police officer's oath of allegiance to Bezler. Thus the only format to provide the legitimacy of authority, that is to hold elections, to defend our country, is the format of the anti-terrorist operation. And I have signed the order. Officially, the anti-terrorist operation was conducting by the security service of Ukraine. But as the armed forces had to be engaged, we had to take the responsibility. I issued a corresponding order to begin the large-scale anti-terroristic operation with instructions to ensure the enforcement, but added a direct order to use the armed forces. On April 13, 2014, the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine adopted a decision to announce the regime of anti-terrorist operation. Next day, the president of Ukraine was issued a corresponding order. I have already come to Krasny Lush on Easter, and I have seen barricades on the road Kharkiv-Rostov. 
crossroad Kharkiv Rostov Donetsk Luhansk. I saw barricades in my native city. I visited Luhansk. SBU has already been seized. I talked to people and I have realized that this had already been decided. I saw Russian soldiers. They were in unmarked uniforms. In Luhansk region we also speak Russian, but their Russian was very different from ours. I served in the Soviet army in Moscow, in the Russian Federation. I knew this dialect. Moscow, St. Petersburg, Tver, ordinary workers, security guards, ordinary people in the cities spoke in our dialect, but commanders spoke mostly in other dialect. Nobody had been prepared for such development of events. Government, parliament, citizens, army, special forces. However, from the opposite side, experienced, clever, well-prepared, determined persons have appeared too quickly. They received the instructions and were aimed at fulfilling them. In May, Kazitsin with his special forces came. They captured the building of the district administration in Antretsit city. It was apparent that they were militaries. They had professional weapons, not only assault rifles, but also machine guns, rocket-propelled grenade, Dragunov sniper rifles, full allowances of ammunition. In May, Kazitsin started to hand out guns to destabilize the situation. They got one or two Kamas tracks and went to mine at 6 a.m., when many people came to mine and held a meeting. They said that Banderevtsi would come and kill them and their children, rape their wives and called for actions. Somebody took their side due to emotions. Some people didn't want to go to work in mine, others just wanted to get a rifle. Yesterday you were nobody, but today you have a rifle, you have a power. Surely many workers decided to take their side. Once I was taken to the cell where all people were militiamen, and then I met such militiamen in the Penal Colony. And I asked them, why did you take guns and went to war? Someone said about emotions, but no ideology was there. Other people said that it was the golden opportunity for person. You were nobody and became somebody important. You have already had a gun in your arms. You could decide the destiny of others. Some militiamen were drug addicts and they were so numerous. A great number of marginalized people who hadn't realized themselves in social life or otherwise were gathered together there. On the initial steps, the vast majority of them were local people, those who were called scums. Classical picture of local separatist is following. Height up to 160 centimeters, scoliosis, about the knee length t-shirt, old sweatpants and flip-flops on bare feet. The city descended into chaos. Kazitsin, with his special forces soldiers, was driving around the cities. They took these marginalized people and gave them guns. Twenty special forces soldiers and crowd of 100-150 people surrounded by a police station. Police surrendered. In each town SBU escaped. The prosecutor's office escaped and police surrendered. That's all. In the morning, they disarmed policemen, blocked and then a city ransacked. Cash machines, banks, large companies, they took cars. I wasn't alone. There were others who tried to mobilize people to resist. Such people were found in the forests, with duct-taped wrists and bullet in the head, without any documents. Further, all this was gaining ground. They needed to form garrisons, commandants' offices. They didn't have enough Russian people, and they started to appoint these alcoholics who had been supporting them to the positions of the heads of the commandant's office. They established Cossacks units and transferred authority, finance, equipment, weapons to them. On May 11, 2014, on the occupied part of Donetsk and Luhansk region, the referendum on the declaring of independence of Donetsk and Luhansk People Republics was held by pro-Russian militiamen. The referendum was held against the Constitution of Ukraine with the systematic violations of the basic international principles and procedures for referendums. Its results weren't recognized by Ukrainian authority, the European Union and the United States. This step was a message that Russia, I said Russia, since it wasn't local but introduced initiative, wasn't going to stop there. Since the beginning, there were thoughts that these disorders were just smokescreen to make society forget about Crimean events.
They collected large photocopiers, took them in SBU and started to print ballot papers. Using photocopier, a sheet of paper with two copies of ballots was divided into two pieces by knife. Most administrations obeyed Efremov and he ordered them to prepare the referendum. Surely the scheme was the same. They held elections earlier. People were listed, observers, organizers, members of the commission. They said them, you have to do it, we have a chain of command. We obtained the order from the authority that was Ukrainian earlier, but now it is Novorossiya. But people, orders and telephone numbers remained the same, all remained the same. That's why it worked. There were not a lot of people, but the number of voting stations was small, and the picture that a lot of people came to vote was created. It's clear that there wasn't many places to vote. They were not disturbed by the fact that the legal space was violated, that this referendum was illegal. There wasn't massive turnout at the referendum. Everything was done for camera. In Krasny Luch city 110 voting stations were. They expanded them and created 55 voting stations. First of all, old people wanted to vote. They went to the voting stations and formed lines in crowd to get the footage. In all cities the same scene was staged. Decreased the number of voting stations to form a crowd for cameras. The first armed clashes between anti-terroristic operation forces and pro-Russian militants happened in Donetsk and Luhansk regions in the middle of April. From May, fighting hasn't stopped. Military operations have started. Surely there were retreats, but we blocked enemies' advancement to the west at once. I gathered military leaders which have started to work more or less professionally. I took a map and pencil and drew a line from Stanitsa Luhanska to Mariupol airport. And I said, it is a front line. Thus we have drawn this front line, it was conditional. But I said, no separatists will cross this line. When we took up the defensive positions, all that were on the home front, it was half of the Donetsk region we have left free from the enemy. The National Guard of Ukraine and the security service worked. All separatist riots, locals, were destroyed. And the war was left to us. Indeed, the war with Russian militaries, mercenaries and militants that had taken the enemy's side. We hoped that we would start the liberation from those people who had captured the administration and administrative buildings in Luhansk and Donetsk regions. We hope that it has started. We saw the panic among the opposite side. In fact, it was real panic. They didn't know what to do, or probably they had to escape. It could be solved at that moment. However, nothing ever happened with it. The problem was that we understood that we hadn't army. There was an information that during Crimean events and later we had only 5,000 capable troops. Frankly speaking, I don't sure that they were. They couldn't appear from nowhere. There were no training, exercises, no petrol to launch aircrafts and helicopters. In these conditions, volunteer battalions, the National Guard of Ukraine and the Ministry of Internal Affairs were formed. I gave governors an order to establish battalion of the territorial defense. Most of them become powerful military units now. They gave army the chance to get prepared. If there were no volunteer battalions, I didn't know the armed forces could conduct those military operations by own strength. As far as I know, especially during first month, many troubles were caused by the fact that our militaries, as well as volunteer battalions, weren't prepared mentally to go to the war, to accept the possibility that probably they would be killed, and they would have to kill somebody. However, I would like to emphasize that from the first days Russian special services have been operating in Donbass region. They were from GRU or FSB. That they were special agents, they formed separate battle groups working against us and groups of trainers. Moreover, Cossacks have come quickly. Most of them had an experience of military actions in Transnistria as well as Chechnya. People fighting against us had real battle experience and knew how to fight. We had only people who had participated in peacekeeping missions. Therefore, we had to learn how to fight on the battlefield. However, such training couldn't be bloodless. Actually, in May they tried to capture Donetsk airport. I understood that it was a strategic position and we couldn't lose it, since militants had got tanks, they have found them in mines, armored vehicles and artillery. 
If they had captured Acton Airport, they would have got a combat aircraft. Thus, I ordered to get our aircraft off the ground and strike at the terminal where Russian occupants were. They didn't expect such professional work of our aviation. They have suffered huge losses, and the combination of assault operation of the land units and aviation allowed us not to have any losses. There's no doubt this operation increased the fighting spirit of militaries when they saw that we could not only resist against Russian aggression, but also won, and we could destroy them. The process of liberation of Donbass has started. I thought that we would completely liberate Donbass to August. However, Russians decided to use the regular troops. August came, Ukrainian army was approaching to the border, they went to Ilovaisk. Russian regular army has already been there. They retreated to Snizhne. From the side of Snizhne they went to Muzinsk, Novopavlivka, Krasny Luch. Cossacks started to leave their positions. When on the checkpoints our local Cossack separatists saw Ukrainian tanks and armored personal carriers, they left their checkpoints and escaped. Without a shot being fired, Musinsk was liberated. They entered Novopavlivka and neighborhoods of Krasny Luch. Cossacks were evacuated hastily. But in the evening Russian army entered Ukraine. They knew that Cossacks were escaping. They entered from the side of border, from the side of Antracid. Chechen battalions entered. <laughs> All Russian soldiers were without chevron, in unmarked uniforms. They had no identification marks. Chechen people said that they were Chechen, they had accent. Some of them also said that they were sent from Chechnya. Young guys, paratroopers said, we are paratroopers. They mentioned resign, Tambov brigades. It got really painful as I thought about our retreat. We were successful at the beginning, territory was rapidly liberated from all these camps. And then, when Russian regular troops have come, all our success vanished. Ukrainian army was defeated in Zelenopilia. Ukrainian army was surrounded and defeated in Izvarine. Ukrainian army was blocked near Krasnodon, another part near Chervonopartizansk, near women's prison. They started to divide them. Krasnodon, Izvarine, Chervonopartizansk, Zelenopilia. Russian army started to encroach into our territory, break chain, surround and shoot. On September 5, 2014, an agreement to hold the war in Donbass was signed. In drafting and signing the agreement, OSCE representative Heidi Tagliavini, the second president of Ukraine, Leonid Kuchma, Russian ambassador of Ukraine, Mikhail Zurabov, so-called DPR and LPR leaders, Alexander Zaharchenko and Igor Plotnitsky took part. We have just signed the protocol consisting of 12 points. However, the most important one is the immediate ceasefire that starts today at 6 p.m. At that moment, it was one of few or probably the only solution. This time was needed to recover from those shocking events happened near Ilovaisk. We needed some time not to rest. We had to regroup those forces which were extremely weak. Minsk was to some extent needed. Minsk agreements and Normandy format is the only platform which was and remains today the diplomatic platform where we could discuss some questions and our enemy doesn't have guns. Certainly such platform is needed. If the pressure was increasing simultaneously up to imposing sanctions, this format would be sufficient for stopping Russia aggressions against us. However, I have not ruled out such possibility. Any war, and our war is not an exception, brings blood, death, smell of burning, ruins and so much pain for both sides. Using regular military units of the Russian Federation, in fact Russian army, and their concentration on the east led to the trench warfare we have today, instead of rapid liberation of Donbass. Unfortunately, Russian aggression is continuing, and this has lasted for five years. When someone says that Ukraine has lost Donbass, I deny. It is just part, the third part, and we didn't lose it. This is a temporary situation when this territory is occupied by foreign state. Donbass nation doesn't exist. There are Ukrainians, citizens of Ukraine that live on the occupied territory today and they are waiting for liberation of their native cities. 
Our enemy is Russia. People living in Donbass aren't our enemies. They are our citizens, even if part of them have another opinion. But I thought it will take some time. People said time heals, and there will be, as our prophet Taras Shevchenko wrote, brothers then embrace each other. I entreat and pray you.